Hello knitters, I'm Mary Annarella, also known as Lyrical Knits, and this is the Lyrical Knitting Podcast. First of all, if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. I put up a podcast, eh, I'm hoping to put one up once a month, and I also have some knitting tutorials that you can find um, if you subscribe, or just just click on my name and you'll find all of my tutorials there. And secondly, I just want to say thank you to everybody for your tremendous response on the provisional cast on tutorial that I put up recently in which I famously mispronounce the word provisional by saying provisional over and over and over again. And um, my fiance corrected me. <laughs> my mother corrected me. <laughs> And I was saying, Mom, but wait, isn't that how we we grew up saying that word in Pittsburgh? She was like, no, honey, you, you're just mispronouncing that word. <laughs> so I put the tutorial up anyway because it's a great technique. And I uh, thought I'd make a little bit of fun of myself because, hey, we all mispronounce words sometimes, and I did it big time. I don't always mispronounce words, but when I do, it's publicly and on YouTube. <laughs> But anyhow, thank you so much for the tremendous response to it. I know it's a really easy and um, easy technique and it's very useful. It's really useful for um, casting on stitches on underarms too. I use it all the time. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And look, I used it here on the sweater. Let's see if I can show you right here. There is absolutely no seam with the provisional cast on here at the bottom of this neckline when I went back to pick up my stitches for this roll neck sweater where I didn't want any sort of pickup line. I wanted a perfectly smooth transition. You totally get it. No gaps. I don't know. I always pick up an extra stitch at the gap there and then decrease it away. But look at that. It's just beautiful and it's a really, really handy, handy cast on to know how to do. So thank you so much for your response to that. It was a lot of fun to put together for you, and I'm so glad you all find it very useful. Today's podcast... <laughs> Do I need to mispronounce the word podcast, too? Today's podcast is... I'm taping this um, right after I got back from the New York Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck, New York, also known as just plain old Rhinebeck. If a knitter says, I'm going to Rhinebeck this year, what they mean is, I'm going to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival in October. Uh, the festival is usually in the middle of October, second or third week, when the weather is usually crisp and perfect for sweaters. And this Rhinebeck did not disappoint. We had perfect sweater weather. And on Saturday, I think we had a high of about, eh, 57 degrees so we could just wear our sweaters and didn't have to cover them up with jackets um, no hats no gloves really needed that day the next day sunday was like a high of 44 so it was pretty chilly especially in the morning when it was still in the 30s so i did not dare go out with only a sweater on even even with my long underwear on i still needed my worsted weight sweater and then a jacket on top of that and a hat and mittens and thick wool socks and i was just working hard to stay warm carrying hot coffee with me wherever I went. Hot coffee, hot cider. Anyhow, I'm back and I thought I'd tell you guys all about it. And I thought I'd do a little show and tell and show you all the goodies. In other words, yarn that I picked up there. Although I got a few other things in addition to yarn. But uh, before the festival, I actually volunteered and worked at the Indie Untangled Trunk Show on Friday night. Uh, the Indie Untangled Trunk Show is the uh, brainchild of Lisa Chamoff. And for those of you who have been there before, it's pretty much a yarn market. There are vendors there where you can pretty much buy yarn, some fiber, um, accessories, knitting accessories, um, project bags, and the like. And, and we had a lot of fun. And I volunteered there. I was assisting the booths of That Clever Clementine, who sells um, project hand-sewn project bags. Katrinkles, who makes um, some really cool wooden, uh, well, bamboo buttons and, and knickknacks that are really, really fun for the knitter. And Backyard Fibers. Alice at Backyard Fibers is a delight. And Sandra of Duck Duck Wool. So I spent most of my, uh, you know, the better part of 
three hours, I think, just milling around between those four booths and just helping out customers and telling them about the yarns and telling them about the project bags and um, because I've, I've worked with all of these people before. Um, oh, and this little tote bag right here is from the show. I think you can still order them online. I'm not, not entirely sure about that, but I think Lisa does have have some left. She ordered extras so that people could order them. Uh, but as a volunteer, I, I got a tote bag and that was a delight. But when I was done with my shift, I um, took off my, my t-shirt and put on my, my sweater and I went and did a little yarn shopping. Uh, the first thing that I picked up is this lovely skein of, oh, there we go, of the Uncommon Thread Posh Fingering. I already knit a sweater up in this exact colorway and this exact yarn, um, and the sweater is called Heart of Glass. It's a long sleeve drop shoulder with a lace pattern at the bottom, my favorite lace pattern that I had to put on just about everything I could think of. Um, I, oh darn, I overbought and I still had two skeins of this yarn left, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to pick up one more skein and see if it matches the other two, because this is the colorway Amethyst. Um, it looks really extra purple here <laughs> and um, anyhow it matched perfectly so I have enough to do another sweater out of this fabulous yarn it's a BFL silk cashmere blend yeah 70% um, blue face lister lister I'm not sure how to pronounce that don't judge me <laughs> uh, 70% BFL 20% silk and 10% cashmere so it's it's a really lovely yarn it's um, dyed in the UK by a woman named I'm going to say her name is C C I E not sure how to pronounce that one either but uh, she's she has got quite an eye for color it's a really wonderful yarn so I picked that up and then I spent oh wow a lot of time um, picking out colors for a five color sweater set. I have this idea that I just really want to play with a bunch of bunch of different colorways in one sweater so that maybe we can all stash bust because we've all got an errant skein here and there and use pretty much equal amounts of, of all five of these colors. And the base that I chose is Duck Duck Wool's Merino Silk Singles. I am really hesitant to do a sweater in, in, in a single ply yarn that has silk in it. I mean, I use single ply yarns all the time. Tosh Merino Light is one of my desert island yarns and, and I, would, I would knit a sweater that, in that without hesitating ever. Uh, but I was a little nervous going, mm, silk content in there, that's gonna pill. But Sandra had a sweater up. It was her, um, it was a lace pattern Hitofude, Hitofude, I'm not sure how to pronounce that either, but it's an all over lace pattern and it had, she, she said she has, she has shaved it like once, but it does not pill and it didn't have any fuzzing up um, where the lace yarn overs were at all. So I thought that was a really good sign that this is a pretty tough yarn. They had a couple of other samples out there and I'm, I'm pretty confident it's going to be fine in a sweater, but I couldn't resist this blue. And then this color said, take me home with you. I mean, look at this, look at these colors in there. It's got like a lime green to it. That's kind of leaning yellow. It's got gray, it's got off white and it's got this teal and they just looked so good together that I couldn't resist. And then this skein here said, oh, but I would look beautiful with it. And, and then I was like, all right, all right, you know, who will volunteer themselves as tribute? And this lime green was like, pick me, <laughs> because it picks up, picks up the lime really beautifully. Yes, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of room in my hands. And then I needed a fifth color and I thought, okay, what would mellow this out? And I thought, all right, a darker gray. Okay, because this variegated skein here has a lot of, get this tag out of the way, has, has a lot of gray to it. And it's not showing up totally there. There we go. But I thought it would just kind of balance it out a whole lot. So, hey, five skein sweater, anybody? Stash busting? So I'm really looking forward to playing with these colorways. So that'll be really fun. I was actually pretty restrained <laughs> at the trunk show, but um, I did get some of the Katrinkles buttons. Let me, see, let me hold these up really close. 
she designs them and they machine cut these out of bamboo and they also have um oh I, I got some toggles toggle shaped buttons I just they have a bit of whimsy to them and and yet they look very very classy as well and the other thing I couldn't resist in her booth was this little sweetheart it's just a little d-ring charm and look what it says Look, can I hold this up right? There we go. Can the camera get that? New York Sheep and Wool 2018. So I'm going to hang that from one of my project bags, one of my tote bags. And that's all I got at the Indian Tangled Show. Like I said, it was in Saugerties. Um, I don't know if they're going to have the space there next year, but there was also you know, a place right next to it to get food. Um, no, it, it was a part of, of the whole show. You could get food and, and drinks at the bar. And um, I ran into a few people that I know there, Wooly Wormhead um, of Wooly Wormhead Hats. Perhaps you've heard of her. She's a, a hat genius. And um, Carol Feller. Um, they are both in from Italy, and Carol. Oh, and Carol is in from the uh, from um, Ireland. She is an Irish designer, and she also um, has some of her own yarns that she puts out there. And she's very talented as well. And I got to chat with them for a good bit. Um, I also ran into Andrea Mowry. She was lovely. And uh, a highlight of, of my milling around was running into the, uh, going into the farmer's daughter, um, the, the farmer's daughter yarn booth. And Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Knits was there. And she is an absolute delight. And I was all nervous, like going up to her, like, oh my gosh, I'm just this lowly person. And she's this big name designer. And she's so talented. And I walked up and I just said, um, hi, Caitlin Hunter. I'm uh, my name's Mary. I'm a big fan of yours. And she was like, Oh, oh, I recognize you, Mary. You're you were on the Fruity Knitting podcast with your cardigan there. I'm like, Yeah. Oh my gosh, I remembered. It was just really, really nice. Um, I saw her at the festival the next day, and um, I was talking with a few people, and I hear this, Hey, Mary. And I turned around, and it was Kate. And she's like, Hi, Mary. I'm like, Hi, Caitlin. That was so nice. I actually remembered me. Um, lovely person. Beautiful designs. Um, Check, check her stuff out because it's really wonderful. She's Boyland Knits. The best part of the Friday night at um, the Indie Untangled show that was running into so many of you. So many of you who have seen this podcast, watched my tutorials, who have knit my patterns. Oh my gosh, I ran into like three people. Uh, one, one had knit... Um, a heart of glass and one was wearing their rocket cardigan of the galaxy i loved it it was so wonderful and a few of you had had like just watched um the provisional provisional uh tutorial and we had a, just a real hoot about that and it was just so nice to take selfies with you all and say hello and just what a treat to just just get to socialize with everyone and really get to put a name to the face there and get to see you all so thank you so much for everyone who came up and said hi it was just really fun and i just loved meeting you and that went for for the indian tangled trunk show and it, that goes for the festival too so speaking about the festival saturday morning got up got some breakfast got some coffee went with friends and i arrived at the at the fairgrounds not super early to wait in line because I like my sleep I don't get to sleep in as much as I like to and waiting in line it can be fun but if it's chilly out eh, it's not really my thing so we arrived around 10 o'clock and there was hardly a line at all so we walked right in and started going around and ended up at the, the buildings A, B, C, and D so there are buildings and then there are booths outside and then there are booths in barns so we went to the buildings and building A, the, that was the at the top of my list, I wanted to visit um, Harrisville Yarns out of New Hampshire. And their big thing this year were their nightshades right there. Can I hold this? Oops, this one has a little flaky on it. Nightshades are, uh, I think they're 90% Cormo. Let me see what it says and 10%, no, it just says American Cormo and wool. So it's it's got a lot of Cormo in it, and I'm really not sure what the other breed of wool is, but Cormo is a really soft breed, and um, their wool is, is really, really cushy. Harrisville is usually known for very rustic, woolly wools, and you know, this one's definitely got some lanolin to it, but wow, it is, it is so soft. It passes the neck test. I always hold a skein up to my neck and if it feels scratchy, I'm like, mm, 
I don't, I can't do it. <laughs> but this, wow, it is really soft, really soft. And this one, I think they had like eight or nine different shades of very dark, almost black colors. Some had like orange flecks in them. Some had blue flecks in them. Uh, some had some, it was more of like a reddish rusty kind of base, um, but very, very dark. Um, this one is called Dashboard and I'm holding it really close to the camera, seeing if you can see the, so you can see the colors. It's sort of like a deep, deep navy, almost black, but still navy base with little flecks of brighter blue dashboard and oh gosh I don't I don't know what I'm gonna make out of this but it's gonna have cables and it's going to be a sweater because I got a sweater quantity I will probably need to get myself a craft light <laughs> to be able to knit with yarn this dark though but oh gosh navy is probably one of my favorite neutrals navy and gray um, I don't wear black straight up black too much but navy oh gosh it just makes makes my heart sing uh, while I was in the Harrisville booth or rather while I was in the line because you had to wait in line what they had you do was uh, fill out an order form get in line and while you were in line they would grab your order form go fetch the yarn for you bring it to you and then you check out so while I was in line I thought you know what I'm gonna get a little more loft uh, because I really, really love wearing the Drax cardigan, which is what I, I'm, and, and that's knit out of loft, right? But in, this one is a slightly darker gray. It's called pumice. The other, uh, the other gray that I used, I believe is called snowbound. It's definitely lighter than this one. This is a little bit darker and I thought I'd make a duster out of it. And yes, loft still passes the neck test. Totally, totally passes. Something that maybe doesn't pass the neck test, but I couldn't resist um, was later on in the day when I came back to the Harrisville booth, you know, just to peek, because I thought, oh, you know what, maybe sometime I'd like to do color work, or I don't know, I just really liked their booth and they're local to me. They're in New Hampshire. They're about, I don't know, they're probably about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute drive from me. Um, but I arrived at the booth and a couple of my friends were, I want to say they were dumpster diving. They were not dumpster diving. <laughs> they were um, going through the discount bins that Harrisville had. And I was like, hey, what are you guys doing? They're like, look at this. Look, look, look what we found. It's a one-off color. It, there's nothing wrong with the yarn. It, it, it spun perfectly, but it's just a one-off color. And look at this green. Look at that green. And all of a sudden I started thinking, Gamora. Gamora Green. Gamora needs her cardigan of the galaxy. And this is, this is on sale. <laughs> so I, I basically dumpster dived. I, I did not dumpster dive. I, I discount bin dove um, right in there. Practically wanted to do a swan dive into this, but um, there was so much of this left. And I want to say the guy's name was Nick. He was saying that this was supposed to be uh, one of their standard green shades, but it was off slightly. So they were like, well, what do we do with it? Well, we'll discount it and we'll sell it at Rhyme Pack um, because there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it's not one of their standard shades. So it's called Pickle. <laughs> and that's pretty accurate, but it's got, I, I don't know, it's, it's like the green in Black Watch Plaid. Black Watch Plaid has blues and greens in it, and this is, is that green that's in there. It's kind of a warm green, it's kind of a cool green. It's got little bits, little bits of both. And I actually swatched this already. I swatched it yesterday, and I'm really liking it. If I can hold this up for you guys. And it doesn't quite past the princessy yarn level um, at all, but it's not super scratchy. And so I can get away with this if, if it's not like up on my neck. Okay. If it's like out here. So I thought, you know what, I'll make a duster with this or something or um, something that is befitting Gamora for her, her cardigan of the galaxy. So I already swatched with that and I'm really, really delighted. Alrighty. So let's see what, ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know what's happening to me because I usually go for merino cashmere blends that I love. I love soft yarn, but 
but darn it, uh, those woolly ones are so attractive too. There's just something really, something really wonderful or even primal about wearing a sweater that 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 has a very rust. That's made of a very rustic wool. I don't know if they just keep me warmer or if they just have more lanolin to them or what. But I've been so attracted to slightly more rustic wools. And um, on the fairgrounds that day, I ran into Carol Feller, and um, you know we were showing each other our purchases what, what we got I guess oh so what did you get she said oh I went to Green Mountain Spinnery and I got I got this beautiful shade of purple and I'm going to make my uh, make some make a sweater out of it I was like oh Green Mountain Spinnery they're even closer to me than Harrisville they're like a 45 minute drive from my house I mean door to door um, and so I I I had tailed it over to their booth and I said hello to them. I mean, we would follow each other on Instagram and I was like, hi, I'm your neighbor. They're like, we know you live in Western Massachusetts. You need to come up. Um, but I went through their booth and I ended up getting their sock yarn. What on earth is this base called? It is called Sock Art Lana. Sock Art Lana. Oh, except that you guys are probably seeing it mirror image. <laughs> Lana, don't worry, I'm going to put all the links down below so you, you'll be able to find this. But I'm trying to hold this up. Does it look purple to you? Because it looked purple to me in the booth until I moved to a different part of the booth and then it looked gray. So I'm like, is it gray? Is it blue? So it's not blurple. I'd say it's grapeple. But I mean, I, I can't resist a really nice gray. I, I mean, a really nice purple. And I also cannot resist a really nice gray, so I got a sweater quantity of the purple, or what I thought might be a sweater quantity of purple, and I got some gray to go with it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe a little bit of color work um, or some striping where I just use a little bit of this gray, but this actually, it's not the softest in the world, but it, it passes my neck test. I'm not super sensitive, but it passes my neck test. Hmm. And I've also swatched this up as well. So I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this very much. And I'm literally getting the, the same gauge with the Shetland, which is not Shetland wool, by the way. It, it's, it refers to the type of yarn, but not the, the wool itself. They, they call the base Shetland, but it's not made with Shetland wool. Um, but I'm getting the same the same gauge on the same needle size with with these and I'm really liking the fabric and wow I really like the green with the purple gosh this so reminds me of Gamora right because her skin's green and and her hair is purple oh and for those of you not familiar with my cardigans of the galaxy <laughs> series it's based on the movie guardians of the galaxy and Gamora is one of the characters there Alrighty. meanwhile I know what you guys are looking at. I got asked a lot. <laughs> I got asked a few things repeatedly on Saturday and Sunday. I got asked a lot about my sweater. Like, oh my gosh, what's the pattern? Oh my gosh, what's the yarn? Um, and I'll tell you that in a minute. And I also got, oh my gosh, where did you get that? Where did you get this bag? Can I buy it here? And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I did not buy this bag. <laughs> at Rhinebeck, but I brought it to Rhinebeck because it's perfect for Rhinebeck. I posted about this on Instagram and I got a ton of questions about this bag at Rhinebeck. I got this while I was on vacation in Bar Harbor, Maine, and I saw it in the window of a shop, haha, called Window Pane. The shop's name is Window Pane. <laughs> I saw this in a window and I had to have it. I was like, oh my gosh, a sheep bag. I want to go look at that. Oh, it's not too it's not too expensive. I'm gonna get this. Yay! <laughs> it's waterproof. <laughs> I mean, it's water resistant, but it's got you know it's shiny vinyl stuff. And when I when I brought it up to the to the checkout counter to purchase it, and the woman who was working the register said, "Oh, did you see that we also have the same print on grocery bags?" And I was like, "Shut up and take my money." <laughs> Like here, here, just take my money and put, put a sheep on something and I'm all over it. I have to have it. But um, for those of you who have asked about it, I promised I would podcast about it. And the brand is Ulster Weavers. Ulster Weavers. U-L-S-T-E-R Weavers. And I'll put the link down below. But I, I found this on Amazon. I mean, all, and all I did was, was Google 
waterproof sheep tote bag and it showed up. But they have a whole series of, of items with this same print on it. Um, they have an apron, they have tea towels, they have this bag, they have the grocery bag. So go to you guys and it, it's just a really, really fun tote bag. So there's that. Yeah, speaking of bags, I also got um, this little bag from Red Stagger Wing. It's a makeup bag, so it's got a vinyl vinyl inside to it. And that is for a present, and I cannot say who it is from because they may be watching the podcast, but I thought I'd show you. Um, it's from Red Stagger Wing. I have another bag um, made made by um, this company. Um, she's a bag maker, it, um, solopreneur. She makes her bags and sells them out of her New Hampshire studio. Yeah, really nice stuff. So that gets us to the second day of Rhinebeck, um, Sunday, which was really, really chilly. <laughs> and it required lots of hand mitts. But I did happen to make it into Miss Bab's booth. Okay, and it was really great to be able to see my super asymmetry there and, and my Rickroll wrap there. And I was really curious about their trios of Yowza. Alrighty. So Yowza is their yarn that is normally in these huge skeins, huge tracts of land, these huge skeins of yarn. So if you want to do color work with them, you really have to work with leftovers. So they decided to start making little trios where a not mini skeins, but 200 yard skeins. And so I bought this trio. So let's see, aubergine, beryl, and dusk are the three colors. And I thought it'd be really fun to come up with a project and maybe do a mystery knit along out of them. I love Yelza. It definitely, definitely passes the neck test. <laughs> okay. And I'm a sucker for purple and jewel tones. So I got some of that. Let's see. Meanwhile, I did get stopped about my sweater a whole lot, so I thought I'd show you the you guys the yarn and give you the yarn details here. I'm gonna stand up right here so you can see the sweater. But the yarn is La Bien Aime Merino Sport. And it's just knit up in simple stockinette to 24 stitches to 4 inches. And it's knit from the top down. And it's just got a little bit of a lace and cable pattern going down the side to keep things interesting and a nice split hem. Um, back in the late 80s and, or, and early 90s, I had an old sweater from uh, J. Crew that had a roll neck or rolled neck. I don't know. Just, just one you just don't cast off the end to. And it was huge. It was it was oversized. I, I think I got it at a factory outlet. It was raglan sleeved and um, I loved it. It was really cozy. And so I wanted to revisit the roll neck, um, but not just do an oversized um, stockinette with, with raglan sleeves. There's so many of those out there. I wanted to do something that, that updated it a little bit. So I updated it with a nice set in sleeve and I actually, kept the cross back a little bit loose because I wanted a very casual look. I wanted a slightly oversized look without being huge. Just let's just say a generous fit, not fitted, but just a generous fit. So it's, you know, it's got positive ease at my bust. Here's my bust, everybody. Positive ease at the way, no shape, no waist shaping at all. Just something that's just a nice, comfortable, relaxed fit. So, and again, with a split hem, and this cable and lace going down the sides. Yeah, and it's top down and it's probably gonna be up on Ravelry by the time by the time I upload this podcast because I'm releasing the pattern soon and I'll link that down below as well. But let's see, I got some yarny thing. I, I got some fibrous things that are not yarn. It's one of my traditions at Rhinebeck to always get a Christmas ornament or two and I really like felted wool ornaments. And so I got these two I get the bluebird of happiness <laughs> and a cardinal because I just love seeing cardinals in the winter time. They're just, the males are so bright and you know, when the world is gray out there, it's really nice to see a bright red cardinal. And while I was at it, I thought, you know what? The studio here needs a little bit of a pick me up. I need some more color here. So I got this felted ball garland. 
<laughs> and I thought I'd decorate the studio with it. They actually had some necklaces like this, but I thought that was a little bit much for me. And thankfully a friend talked me out of it because it's just not me. I think they're adorable, but I thought it'd be really fun to decorate the studio with, with these little felted balls. That's right. I did pick up a few Christmas presents there. I got things like some alpaca socks. Um, there is a whole food and wine building. So there are lots of wineries that are doing wine tastings at the time. So I got some Prosecco from the Finger Lakes region and I got an ice wine. It's a very sweet dessert wine. You just drink teeny little bits of it because it was really sweet. And you have it with cookies. Um, there is a spice lady there who makes amazing garlic. And my mother was totally insistent, please pick this up for me. So I got my mother and I got my son some of this roasted garlic dust. I mean, and it is dust, it's an, I, uh, more than powder. What's the brand? Rocker Box, Rocker Box. I really like that stuff and I got some for me because I use it a lot. And um, she also had something called black garlic this year. So um, it's I had never heard of it and I told my fiance about it and he was like, Oh, yeah, that was an ingredient on Chopped not too long ago. Um, it's fermented garlic, and she gave me a taste of it, and it doesn't taste like all garlicky. It tastes sweet, actually, which I thought that was really interesting. So I was like, I have to try this out. And, of course, I had to try some maple products. I mean, I, I live in Maple Syrup Central, Western Massachusetts. We have tons of, of sugar houses here that all produce their own maple syrup. And I live like right next door to Vermont. I can get that all the time, but I got maple balsamic vinegar, which is amazing. Oh my gosh, it, it's, it's, it's really, really tasty. It's gonna make some great salad dressings and, and things to just um, dip a little bit of cheese into. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, and there's one more thing over here. I got to hang out with a lot of friends that I don't get to see very often and including some people who I've known online really well for several years now and had never met um, in person. And one of my friends came up to me and again, I we see each other twice a year tops and she came over to my dinner table on Saturday night and she's like, oh, here Mary, I, I saw this a few weeks ago and I thought of you so I picked it up for you. Let me show you. She gave me this. Can you see that? You know who that is. It's Mr. Rogers and it says Mr. Rogers Encourage Mints on it. So my friend knows I like a good pun, but more than that, um, people who, who have known me for a little while find out that I love Mr. Rogers. I just, I, I love everything he did, everything about his program. I love who he was. And, and it's kind of, he's kind of special to me too because I grew up in the Pittsburgh area and he was from Pittsburgh. He, he was born like a, a 10 minute drive from, from where I lived outside of Pittsburgh. And, you know, he was kind of a local hero. Uh, I've been to the Mr. Rogers um, Children's Museum, to the Children's Museum where they have all of these Mr. Rogers memorabilia there. And every time I go back to Pittsburgh, I, I go and visit there because it makes me feel all warm and happy inside. And, um, that's kind of like how I want to be, right? So to be given a little tin that has Mr. Rogers on it and a friend of mine said, oh, Mary, this reminded me of you. So I got it for you. I was like, oh my God, that is just the nicest little thing ever. So I don't know. It got me thinking about, you know, it's a wonderful weekend for me. It's, it's, it's not a big yarn weekend for me so much as it's a big friend and a big people weekend. Everyone at that festival, uh, people were going around complimenting each other's sweaters and asking about them. I mean, and, and not just just Christy Glass, um, who famously made her uh, makes her um, "Show Me Your Rhinebeck" sweater video every year, which I've seen part of so far. It's it's really wonderful. But everyone wants to know about your sweaters. I want to know about what you're wearing. I mean, almost like we're all walking down, you know, the red carpet at the Oscars, and we're asked, "So, what are you wearing? Who are you wearing?" <laughs> We all want to know um, because we're all there because we love yarn and we're there because we love eating cider donuts too. <laughs> but we're there for the friendship. Um, you know, I, I, I got to spend time with about 30 uh, of 
my friends and I got to make new friends and I got to, I mean, I got to meet so many of you and now we're friends and we can put the name to the face more easily. Um, so going there is really for the people. And as I was leaving the fairgrounds, you know, my, my heart was just full. My bags were full and my belly was full and my heart was full. And on Saturday, uh, sorry, on Sunday, I was getting ready to leave leave the festival and just go straight home. So I had to make sure that I had everything with me and I had all of my bags and I was shuttling things out to the car. And it was around 3.30, 4 o'clock on the Sunday, so the fairgrounds were getting ready to close and it was getting a little quieter. And I was thinking, why do fiber festivals matter? I mean, what's the big deal of them? Why do they matter? Well, they matter because you can put the face you can see the face behind the sweater design. You can see the face behind who made the yarn, before the face behind who made your buttons. So, you know, from, from a business standpoint, business owners who, who make buttons and who spin yarn, who mill the yarn for you or who raise the sheep, get to meet who, who they're making their products for, get to, get to meet you. Um, and I get to meet people who, who are producing this yarn and I get to learn more about the yarn. Um, it, it's really fascinating. I like knowing who is behind something that, that I'm working with on an almost daily basis, because I knit almost every day. You know, who's making this yarn? Where did it come from? Why did you dye it this color? Um, so it's really nice to see that, but more than that, way more than anything from a business standpoint, as I looked around the festival, Every person at that festival was happy. How many places do we get to go where everyone is so happy? Um, you know, certainly not when I'm driving out on the highway. There are happy people driving out on the highway, but there are some not so happy people driving out on the highway. But you go into a festival like that, everyone has a smile on their face. Everyone is just having a great time. Um, I think once I heard a, a little kid who was crying, you know, because they were hungry or because they were tired, it's like, but that doesn't last that long, <laughs> you know? Just about everybody there was just beaming and had a big grin on their face. And I was thinking to myself as I was leaving the festival, like, that's why they're important. They're important because of the people. They're important because they spread happiness. And just as I was thinking that thought to myself, um, three women were walking up towards me, but they were walking up to, you know, make their last run through the festival and they were all carrying bags and they were tired and they were walking, but they were just beaming. And they're just like <sighs> walking and walking and walking like this. And they were so happy and they were laughing. And I just looked at them and I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, I just, thought to myself, why do festivals like this matter? And I thought they matter most of all because of the happiness that they bring us and the happiness we bring to it. And they were like, you go girl, that's so awesome. And I'm getting all teary eyed because it's the sort of things really important to me. <laughs> yeah, because, and there I was thinking about happiness and then I just saw three incredibly happy people right there. Talk about, you know, you get what you look for. So I wanna look for that kind of happiness everywhere I go, everywhere I go. And that was the thought that I left the festival with. And and so I, I, I left the festival, said goodbye to everybody and um, thanked the security guards who were right there. They said, see you next year. And I walked out to my car and I reached into my pocket to grab my keys. But what came out in my hand was this. <laughs> and I almost cried, because again, you get what you think about. You know, the, the happiness that you bring to the festival is the happiness that you spread around and it's the happiness that you take home with you. So I hope you've enjoyed the podcast and I hope that wherever you live, you can get to some sort of sheep and wool yarn festival and enjoy it with friends, make some new friends and uh, spread the happiness, spread the love. So I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.